Hey everyone, welcome back to Into the Stars. In this video, I'm going to be going over Stellarium, which is a free astronomy software that allows you to see all the stars and see what's going to be coming up uh, and really bring your astronomy game to the next level. So once you install Stellarium, this is what you're going to see. Uh, you can hold the left click on your mouse button to pan around. And as you can see, we can see the horizon here. We have north, uh, northeast. We can keep going, circling all around, northwest. It's a 360 degree view all the way around us. Now this isn't where I'm located. This is the stock uh, image that it comes with Stellarium. You'll see the same thing. Uh, you can change this. So you can go out to where you normally do your photography or your astronomy and you can actually take a 360 degree photo of your backyard or wherever it is and then you can bring it into Stellarium and then what's really cool about it, if you have a big house right next to where you're viewing, the house will show up in the screen and you'll know what your house is going to be blocking. So if you say you want to look at Mars, for example, and Mars is behind the building, you won't have to then run to your telescope to see if you can see Mars because you'll already know that you won't be able to see it. So Stellarium is an amazing program. It has everything you need. And the best part is that it's completely free. I'm going to go through some of the features here uh, and kind of show you how to use it. So I'm going to go through some of the features here. Uh, with Stellarium. So if you move your mouse around, you have this four button tooltip at the top right. And now if I was new to Stellarium, I would just tell you don't touch this. Uh, up here, <clears throat> this is 100% to do with the view. So if you had a CCD camera, so if you were taking photographs, uh, obviously through your telescope, you're going to be zoomed in and things like that. That's what this is going to do. So if you want to know what you're going to see through your telescope, you can actually set this up with the specifications of your telescope and so when you click on a star uh, it'll actually zoom in and show you exactly that if you look through your telescope this is what you're going to see but for what we're going to use Stellarium for right now and I'll do a video on setting that all up later if you want to look for that video uh, what we're going to do now is we're only going to find out how can we use Stellarium in our backyard to find objects such as the International Space Station, Mars, Venus, uh, and certain galaxies and nebulas. Okay, so let's go through some of the features. If you move your mouse down to the bottom, uh, you're going to get this display option. This is going to turn off and turn on some of the features of the, the view. On the left hand side, this is where you're going to do all the settings and configurations. So first things first, let's take a look at the bottom. We'll start from the left and we'll go all the way through. So this is the constellation lines. If I click this, it'll actually show where the constellations are in the sky. The next one beside that is the labels. So it'll show the names if you want to see them. And this one I find really cool. This is the artwork. So you can actually see what those constellations are supposed to be. So there's the Big Bear, Ursa Major, and the Asterism, the Big Dipper, which is right there. Of course, you follow these two stars at the end of the Big Dipper in a straight line. The first bright star you're going to get to right here is the North Star and you can see that's part of the Little Bear Ursa Minor. If I turn off the atmosphere so that it actually will get rid of the sun, it'll uh, make it dark, it's not actually going to go to nighttime, it's just going to turn off the atmosphere which is this one over here, it's also just the letter A on your keyboard, it'll make it dark and you can see that's Polaris up there. If I turn the sky back on, the next option is to turn on the equatorial grid. So what this is, this takes a little bit of explanation to explain, but you can see the North Star is at the top center of this grid. And if I were to hit play, which would speed up time, these stars would start to move across the sky. And the only one that's not really going to move is the North Star because they're all going to orbit around this point. So this is because the Earth is tilted at 22 and a half degrees, the North Star is not going to be directly above you unless you are at the North Pole. But since we're further south, I have this set up for Toronto. 
uh, Canada, it's going to be down just a bit. In fact, how far it is from directly above my head, so right there is Ursa Minor, I can actually turn on this grid. So this grid right here, that you're the original one, that is the equatorial grid, and this is the regular grid. So that would be directly above our head. And the distance from there to there is actually going to be our latitude, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, most people don't use this grid. This is known as the um, altitude azimuth. Uh, we're not going to use that. So we'll just turn that one off. That one is the second one in, sorry, the fourth one in, and that gets rid of it. I like to leave this one on because it really shows uh, where the stars are going to go. I'm going to turn it off just for now, though, because I want to show you some of the other features. So I will turn, I'll leave the bear, actually, I'll turn these all off here just for a moment. So we're back to where we started. The next one is the ground. If you want to be able to see what's just below the horizon, you can click that, and then all of a sudden, the ground is gone. And if you turn off the atmosphere, you can see the stars come out, uh, and there's the horizon there. So it can be a little confusing. Sometimes it's nice to leave the ground on just so you can see uh, what's coming up and what's coming down. And there you go. There's the Big Dipper just showing itself. Interesting fact, this star right here, the middle star of the Big Dipper, this star right here used to be used by autometrists to find out whether you need glasses or not. One feature you can do with a Stellarium is just scroll in with your mouse wheel and it'll zoom in. And what I'm going to show you is that that star system is actually two stars. And actually, the majority of the stars in the night sky are actually known as two uh, binary systems or stars orbiting each other. If you could detect the difference, if you could actually see that there was two stars there, then you didn't need glasses. Uh, but if you couldn't see that there was two stars there, then they would give you glasses. That's an interesting fact. Uh, it's actually, if you want to be really technical, if you want to ever take your telescope and take a look at it, it's actually a triple system. It's actually three stars orbiting each other. All right, so we can turn the atmosphere back on. We can turn the cardinal points on. That's the north, south, southeast, southwest. We can turn on galaxies. So if we turn on this symbol here, I should, I should be careful there. It's not galaxies. It's actually deep sky objects. Uh, and so that includes galaxies and nebulas and things like that. So you can see here's Bode's galaxy right here. If I click on it, um, you get all the information that you would need over here. So if I click on any star... You can see we're looking at a galaxy, tells us our magnitude. We'll talk about that in another video, but the magnitude is basically how bright an object appears on Earth. It has a color index, so we can talk about that in a later video. Its location uh, is its right ascension and declination. Notice that's not changing. Right ascension and declination is like latitude and longitude, but in outer space. Uh, and they don't move, obviously, because if they did, it would be a horrible coordinate system. However, notice its altitude and azimuth is changing like crazy. Uh, and that's because the Earth is spinning. Well, there's a whole bunch of other things. When it's going to rise is a really important. And transit is when it's going to be at the highest point in the sky that night. So it's going to transit around um, 8 p.m. So 8.30, 8 p.m. would be the best time to take a picture of this object. Because that's the highest it's going to be in the sky. Which means that you're going to be looking through the least amount of atmosphere. And there, down there, you can see how far away. So this is 11.8 million light years away. So this is not, in, obviously, it's not inside our galaxy, right? It's outside our galaxy because it is another galaxy. All right, so we can turn off the deep sky objects. We can turn off the planet labels. Let's see if we can find a planet in the night sky. I'm going to turn on the equatorial grid. Uh, and let's just take a look, see if we can see a planet up here. There's Polaris, Capella. Ah, there's Mercury over here. So Mercury and Venus are both up right now. There's the sun. It's currently daytime, so we will not be able to see these objects tonight because they are in front of the sun. Uh, but I can turn on and off the planet labels. Okay, so there's Mercury and Venus turning on and off. Uh, I can switch between equatorial and um, uh, azimuth mount. I'm not going to click on that, but I'll just show you what it does. It just kind of tilts your head so that your telescope is in line with these grid lines and so your telescope will move uh, nicely in just one direction instead of moving up and down. So if you think about wh why that's important, if you want to take a photo of an object, you may need to look at that object for an extended period of time and instead of the object moving out of view, the telescope will have a motor and that motor will move the telescope slowly in that one direction in the direction that the stars are moving 
And since stars only appear to move in one direction because of the rotation of the Earth, you only need one motor. So if you can get a telescope that's slanted like this, this is known as a, um, an equatorial mount, then the telescope will be tilted in such a way that it only follows the stars in that direction. Um, don't really need that feature for what we're doing. In fact, it might make it <laughs> hard to see what you're doing. Uh, that uh, just makes the screen bigger and smaller. This is really useful. If you're outside at nighttime, remember we showed you in a previous video that the red light is really good for your eyes. Okay, so the, the And it also looks really cool, right? Uh, so the red just allows you to be able to uh, see outside and then look up in the sky and you'll still be able to see without this big blinding, blinding light in your eyes. Uh, we can turn exoplanets on and off. Okay, so if there are planets around other stars, we can turn the feature on and off. Uh, meteor showers, if there were any, uh, we can turn those on and off. Uh, we can show meteor showers, but, and, and satellite hands shows us where the satellites are, if there's going to be any. And then finally, we have the play button. So I've hit play, uh, and this is a live view uh, of the sky. And if I speed it up, you can see that the stars are going to move. Well, the Earth is actually spinning, but it looks like the stars are moving. And I can speed it up a bit, which would be kind of useful if you want to know where the objects are going to go. But as you know, because you have this grid on, you're going to know exactly where they're going to go. All right. Pause, set it back down to this button right here, sets it to now. So if you want to reset, that's currently where we are. On the left hand side, if I deselect an object, I don't know how to do that. Just click somewhere where there's not. On the left hand side, we have a few things that you can do. We'll start at the top. This is your location window. So first thing you want to do is change it to where you are. So just type in the name of your city, or you can just uh, find your latitude and longitude no matter where you are on the earth. Uh, and then that'll be that. That way you can always see uh, the sky as it looks from where you are. Uh, we have date and time. So if you want to change the date, if you want to say, oh, I'm going to be camping on you know, the 30th of this month, I want to go to the 30th and take a look at what I'm going to be able to see that night. Uh, you have the sky view options window. So if we started on sky, it's just showing you what you can turn on. So the Milky Way brightness, so that's the big haze that runs across the sky. You can change how bright it appears. Um, and there's all these little things that you can change, kind of like whether you'll see them or not. This is the solar system objects, or SSO. You can see there's some options in here to turn things on, like the halo around the moon, uh, the scale of the moon, uh, orbits, things like that. So if you want to mess around with that, you can. This is the deep sky objects. Uh, M is the most important one for what we're going to be doing. These are the Messier objects. Uh, these were discovered by Charles Messier as he was looking for planets. He wanted to make sure that what he did see, he didn't confuse for planets. So when he discovered these things, he wrote them down. Uh, so there's M1, M2, M3. I can't remember how many there are. I think there's 110. Those are 110 objects that Charles Messier discovered that weren't planets. Um, he was looking for planets, but these hazy objects in the sky end up being galaxies, and that's what he came well known for, is the, the object that he discovered. Anyway, because he did that with a primitive telescope back in the day, his objects are some of the most easiest ones to see, and really cool to see. So people will actually look for the Messier objects. So uh, also known as the Messier hunt, you can look that up. Uh, that can be like an astronomer's uh, main project, is to photograph every single Messier object. NGC, this is the, I believe it stands for the New Galactic Catalog. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of more catalogs here, but the ones that are already checked off are probably going to be the most common ones that you need. I might turn on HCG. That would be about it. Um, you can also set by filter. Let's say you don't want to see any, um, I don't know, for example, galaxies. It'll just turn off all the galaxies in those catalogs. Uh, markings, you can change the colors of all the different markings, like the, the north, south, east, west. Uh, or these blue lines for the equatorial <clears throat> coordinates. Your landscape, this is where you can go in and change um, your landscape so that you can change the view here. I'll show that in a different video. This is really neat. This is the star lore. You can change to which culture um, that you want to learn about the history of the stars or constellations. Right now it's set by default to Western, but there's some other really, really cool ones in here that you can learn about. Uh, and then survey, these are just uh, different surveys that were done and you can turn them on and off so that you can see stars uh, from these surveys. Just It's basically more data. Turn that off, that was the calendar. 
Uh, what do we have? Uh, we have the search window. So if you're looking for something very particular, you can just click objects, type it in. Uh, we have, you can also look for it by position. So if you know the position of an object you want to look at, you can just type it in. For example, I, my students that I remember I, I teach, I'm a teacher and my students actually bought a star and named it uh, and got it named. If I wanted to find that star, the best way for me to find it would be actually type in the right ascension and declination. So if I want to go look at that, I could. Um, you can also look up asterisms. So these are asterisms are small parts of constellations. So like the Big Dipper um, is actually not a constellation. It's an asterism, which is a smaller part of a bigger constellation. So Ursa Major, the Big Bear, this, a small part of that constellation is uh, the Big Dipper. And so the Big Dipper becomes known as an asterism. Another very common, common one is Orion's Belt. Uh, Orion's Belt is an asterism, but it's actually part of the constellation Orion. And the last one that I would do is, let's see, configuration window. Yes, this is the one I, I want you to look at here. This is something that you should do in this program because it'll help you in the long run, especially when you get really into this. Under extras, there is an option here to download additional star catalogs. So what this will do is you look in the night sky and I zoom in, let's say I zoom in on this region here and I take a picture uh, when I take a picture with my telescope of this region, there's actually going to be a whole bunch of stars, but in my program, it's not going to show them. And that's because you don't have all the stars downloaded. Uh, and the, the benefit of that is if your telescope is slightly off from where you're looking, you won't know where you are because you won't be able to see a match in this program. So if you download all the stars and your telescope is pointed over here, but you actually want to be pointed over here, you should be able to tell. You'll be able to find the pattern and go, oh, my telescope's just a little bit to the left. I should move it to the right to get where I want to be. So just download all of these. These will give you all the stars you need. There'll be tons. You can notice I haven't done that because I've just downloaded the program. Uh, you can change the time, the format. There's some more things in here. There's scripts and then some plugins if you need. But this is Stellarium. And Stellarium is a very useful tool. I use it. Uh, I can actually plug in right to your telescope. You can control your telescope from Stellarium, which means you can have Stellarium in your house and your telescope outside, and you can connect to it uh, and then just run the telescope from in here. Uh, so in some future videos, you'll see this program again. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about Stellarium, uh, please add them in the comments. If you have some other programs that you really like, go ahead and tell me about them in the comments. I'll take a look. I may even share them. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck and clear skies.